Hey guys, happy Monday. It is time for another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So being a Monday, Mr. Rafa was here and he worked pretty much all day on the beautiful One Family Bahama Blue 64. So what he did today was he assembled uh, the vent wings on both sides. So um, the car did come with original glass. You can see the logo there. And so basically what we do on a car like this where we want to use as much original glass as possible is if we do have the original glass, we buy the, the vent window assemblies from Wolfsburg West, you know, instead of like trying to get original ones re-chromed and everything, Wolfsburg West's reproductions are really nice. Um, they come complete though. And so what we do is we basically remove the glass from them and then replace it with a good piece of original logoed glass. And so that is what Rafa did today for this car for the passenger side and the driver's side. You can see it over there. And then he did also get the door windows in. I think um, one side is done completely. The other side is almost done as far as, you know, the mechanism where it roll, rolls up and down and stuff, obviously. Um, he also worked on putting the, the sound deadening material in. So we, we make these and copy them as close as we can to the original ones. They have those holes in them, uh, which I, I don't know why Rafa didn't either, but we put them in there because the original ones had them in. So yeah, he made those and installed them, um, I think on both sides. Yeah, this one's got it too. And then he also, I think made, or will make the ones that go back here, uh, similar ones. So yeah, I got those things done. Um, one issue that we ran into with, um, which Rafa took care of was, you know, these cars are old and things like window regulators, um, you know, things fatigue. These are, are very old, you know, well over 50 year old parts. And so as he was installing, I honestly don't remember if it was the driver or passenger. I think it was the passenger side. The regulator, it just pretty much like exploded, like it just came apart. So where you crank it and that turns basically on these early ones, like this huge gear, which in turn um, turns another gear and, and makes the, the window roll up and down. <laughs> that thing pretty much just like completely came apart. The welds just failed after all these years. And so luckily we have a welder and we know how to weld and all that good stuff. So Rafa pulled the window regulator back out, you know, diagnosed the issue, came pretty clear what happened is, you know, a weld failed and so on. So welded it back up and, you know, reassembled it and got it back in the car and, um, you know, installed it. So there you go. Yeah, you never know on these cars, especially when you're trying to use a lot of original parts. Uh, you know, again, these cars have 50 plus years of, of fatigue on them in, in a lot of cases and sometimes... Sometimes they're just, they're done. And so you got to go and repair them as needed. Anyway, long story short, windows are mostly in on this one. Um, we are going to put a set of nice original restored pop-outs in this car. We're waiting to get those from a guy named Ruben who sells a lot of really nice um, vintage parts. And so Ruben, I think, is going to try and get us those maybe by the end of this week. So we'll have those and uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's kind of it for this car for today. Big job, windows are a pain in the ass, um, especially when you are doing them nice and trying to use original glass and you gotta you know, um, put uh, the lift channels on and stuff like that. It, it's, it's a lot of work. Anyway, so that was it for this beauty for today. What I did was I worked on the buggy chassis and let me start at the front. So what I did at the front was I went ahead and I installed the sway bar. This car did have a sway bar on it when it came in. And of course we had the sway bar powder coated and everything and reinstalled it with the original style clips. And anyone who has installed these before can tell you they are a huge pain in the ass. Luckily, uh, over time, I've developed some tricks uh, where I put these on where it's not as bad as it was uh, the first few times I did it. Kind of learned, learned some little tips and tricks. Um, 
on getting those on a little easier. I probably should have made a video showing some of those things. I'll try and do it next time I do one. It's it's hard to explain without actually showing what I do. But anyway, got that installed and it's looking very nice and correct and original. And then from there, I moved on to the back of the car. And as you saw when I walked past it, pretty much working on the bumper cage here. So I went ahead and installed these, I don't know, I guess I'd call them adapters here for lack of a better word. So all this stuff came with this car. So um, I installed these adapters that go on the big uh, bolts that hold the, um, the cradle mount to the frame horns. So installed those on there and then um, took these pieces here, which hold it to the shock tower. And I had to actually put an angle on, on here because um, this chassis has angled um, shock towers. Pretty much like mocked everything up, made sure everything was gonna fit, which, you know, it should have because it did come off the car, but um, you know, you never know. I wanna make sure things fit well, measure everything, make sure we could get everything, you know, even side to side and stuff like that. And then once I got the bumper cage where I was happy with it, then I took the skid plate, which is not in here at the moment, and started kind of mocking it up, you know, where it was going to fit underneath there, how it was going to bolt up underneath the, the bottom of the chassis, kind of just past the, the, the front uh, transmission mount there. Pretty much got all that mocked up and saw that everything is going to fit pretty darn well. And so then basically what I did was this bumper must have had a million holes in it where different stuff was mounted over the years and so pretty much started welding holes closed um you can see a bunch of them there some of them i've started uh grinding off already um still got more grinding to do yeah so there's some that i already already ground down but yeah so the plan is here is to weld all the holes closed and get the, the whole thing powder coated like that. And then finally, when we basically go to do the final assembly of the car and put this thing on, at that point, you know, we'll make sure that this thing clears the muffler, that it's straight side to side, you know, everything checks out. And then we'll basically come in and, you know, we'll drill a hole through both of these pieces, say right here and put a bolt through it. You know, same thing down here. We'll put holes in for mounting the skid plate up underneath there. We'll put holes underneath the, the bottom of the chassis about where my finger is to mount the front of the skid plate up there. You know, pretty much wait until everything is ready to go together and we know everything is gonna clear and then do the final holes as far as, um, you know, mounting everything up solid. So pretty much I just gotta take this uh, bumper cage finish grinding my welds and then it's going to go off to powder coating same thing with the um with the uh, skid plate itself so yeah pretty much spent the afternoon working on this thing doing mock-ups test fitting tweaking welding grinding etc so that was pretty much my afternoon um Mr. Jacob uh, came in today after school and what we decided to do on his car was go ahead and pop his long block in here for mock-up purposes. Um, so those of you that follow the channel might remember that this motor is a 1600. And of course this car being an oval window came with a 36 horse, which is a considerably smaller motor. And so what we're doing is we're using this tin here, which we're gonna replace by the way, but we're using that as a template to figure out how much uh, we have to actually trim it so that it'll clear the, the engine compartment seal and stuff like that. The new replacement of this plate here, as well as the fan shroud, are on back order. We're getting new ones of those, and hopefully those will be in maybe this week. And so as soon as those come in, what we'll do is we'll transfer this one that we've trimmed here and got to fit. We'll transfer that you know cut line to the new one. We'll trim it. We'll make sure it fits. And then that piece, the new fan shroud, the cylinder tins, all this stuff will go off to powder coating. And um, actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. We also need to fit the fan shroud to the engine case because they often don't fit well. They hit here a lot of times. Anyway, 
we're gonna do a bunch of mock-ups, make sure everything fits spot on, and then and only then, all that stuff will go off to powder coating, and then it's gonna look amazing. So we also mocked up his uh, intake manifolds today. Remember, we're putting small dual carbs on here, and it's a good thing we're doing mock-ups because lo and behold, the, uh, the manifold is actually hitting the body right here. We've got the short manifolds for it. I think we may have to go with the long one so they'll actually uh, come more up like this rather than out and hopefully be able to clear that. So that's, that's a little issue we gotta take care of. I think it's just gonna be a matter of swapping the manifolds that we have with the kit for the longer ones. But again, this is why we do mock-ups, especially on a car with you know, mix and match motor and stuff like that as far as not, not being an original motor to this car or you know, the original size motor. Uh, you know, a lot of times you run in stuff like that. So that's why we do mock-ups. Anyway, uh, that is it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.